चलो स्लेट स्ट्राइड टू स्टार्ट विद न्यू टॉपिक मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ योर सॉलिड्स mechanical properties of solids in this one we will be talking about your elasticity beta we will be talking about your elasticity so the first definition what you are talking about is right now in the elasticity how do you define elasticity beta in the elasticity we are talking about right now in this classes stress strain angst modulus so blah blah conditions we will be talking about this one beta <coughs> in this one we talk about stress and strain okay we mainly talk about either rubber and we talk about your steel okay Can anyone define me what is an elasticity beta? Elasticity is the property is the property of a body by which by which it tends to restore. or regain its original shape and size against the deforming force against the deforming force done beta so what is an elasticity elasticity is the property of a body by virtue of which it tends to restore or regain its original shape and as well as of your size against your deforming force against your deforming force is it clear for everyone is it clear How are you, dear? After a long time, how is your preparation going on? Sure, very good. So, elasticity is the property of a body by virtue of its tends to restore or regain its original shape and size against the deforming force. Now let us try to define what exactly is this deforming force, beta. Deforming force. Deforming force. That means when you apply certain force, if the body is changing the shape, that type of forces are called as of what? Deforming forces. Okay. So I can say that it is the force that causes. deformation deformation means change in the structure or shape anything like say for example there is some body here right now okay on this one you are applying a force that is your capital f this f is known as deforming force why on this wire when you apply the force what is happening the body may either elongate or either it may be compressed depending upon the relation like say for example like see when you are applying the force in this direction on this body if you are applying the force in the opposite direction there is one force here right now capital f and there is one more force in the opposite direction so this body undergoes what for me elongation Isn't it? Or if I am taking the same body right now, if this is your body, and if you are applying the force on this one, like this. Now, what happened to this body, beta? Can anyone tell me? You are 
opposing it so what happened it gets compressed so there is your compression so due to this deforming force the body may either elongate or either it may compress such type of forces are called as a force deformation forces is it clear for everyone is it clear so next saturday what do you mean by restoring force restoring force what do you mean by your restoring force can anyone tell me beta restoring force is nothing but beta the intermolecular force which has been developed in substance which retries to go to its original position or original dimension even after removing of certain deforming force like a rubber band isn't it if you take a rubber band once you extend it and remove that external force what happened the body will come back to the original uh, original shape or not so such type of forces are called as of your deforming forces okay so i can say that it is it is the intermolecular it is an intermolecular force intermolecular force developed in substance developed in substance which tries to restore its original dimensions original dimensions after removal of deforming force after removing of your deforming force is called as of your restoring force is it clear for everyone beta is it clear for everyone what do you mean by the restoring force right now tendency to regain its original shape so it is an intermolecular force developed in the substance which tries to restore its original dimensions <laughs> after removal of your deforming force is called as of your restoring force is called as of what restoring force is it clear beta then chart very good now let us try to define the term elasticity i already told you elasticity the property of a substance which tries to regain its original configuration after removal of certain deforming force is called as of your elasticity so let me give you examples of elasticity i'll write there itself otherwise it will be a problem examples of elasticity can anyone give me some examples of elasticity beta quartz fiber is nearly perfect elastic body okay if the body doesn't regain such type of bodies are called as what plastic bodies keep a star mark here if body doesn't regain its dimensions regain its dimensions it is called as a what plastic body it is called as plastic body example clay or maida anything like that basically so if the body doesn't regain its dimensions are called as a what plastic body is it clear beta is it clear chal see this one let us try to define or let us try to understand the elasticity in detail like say this is some body which is been hanging okay and here you are applying some force capital f this f is your deforming force that means it is trying to increase the length of this one so such type of force is known as deforming force now this deforming force is been exerting on this part beta like say on this area anywhere which is been acting in the opposite direction so the force which is restoring it not allowing it to bring it back to the not allowing it to change is called as what capital f that capital f is called as of your restoring force 
because for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so when you are applying the force the wire will try to not change its dimension the wire may change the dimensions only if your applied force is greater than your restoring force if your applied force like deforming force is lesser than restoring force the body will not change its shape so the body will change its shape only if your deforming force is greater than restoring force okay we are talking about the force which has been exerted on this area okay like we define some terms in this one beta like uh, if you might have been remembered pressure is equals to how do you define that if pressure pressure is equals to your deforming force divided by area deforming force divided by area that is f by your a unit is unit is newton per meter square r pascal r pascal isn't it is it clear chalo next one one more term in this one what do you mean by stress represented by some s or anything this is your restoring force this is also restoring force divided by area same f divided by your a done next one what do you mean by strain strain is equals to your change in dimension change in dimension divided by original dimension by original dimension no units because both of them are length change means delta l original means l so it has no units no dimensions clear what do you mean by pressure pressure and stress are one and the same beta it is force per your unit area clear chalo very good now next one is types of stresses types of stress and strain types of your stress and strain just now defined you how do you define in stress beta stress is equals to stress means strain means matlab uh, change in dimension beta change in dimension by original dimension strain that means like say uh, you have been uh, listening the classes after uh, for four hours or five hours continuously when you are in the first class you feel full of active by the fourth hour or fifth hour what happens to you what happens to you 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 really get something like you know drowsiness or maybe you be feel that your energy is lost then that means you get tired that's the, that change in dimensions of your body is called as strain beta okay so stress is equals to restoring force divided by area okay and strain means change in dimension change in dimension divided by original dimension divided by original dimension clear beta strain has no units because both of them are length and length clear chalo next one longitudinal longitudinal stress and strain longitudinal stress and strain see the first one beta in this one length and area changes number 2 volume remains constant there is no change in volume third one shape doesn't change shape doesn't change it will just increase or decrease and fourth one there will be a normal stress in this one every time that means perpendicular to this one. okay that means if i am taking some wire like this this is your wire when we apply certain weight to this one capital m the force which is been developed in this wire 
F will be equal to how much for me? M into G because weight of the body is acting in the downward direction. So this is your original area. Area will be equal to pi into your R square. This is your original length. Length will change, area will change, but volume will remain for me constant. So how do you write here longitudinal strain beta? Such type of your strain is called as a fourth longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain means change in length by original length. Or change in length is represented by extension divided by L. Extension divided by your L particle. That is called as of your longitudinal stress and your longitudinal strain. Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear? So in longitudinal stress, length and area changes, volume remains constant, shape doesn't change, and the stress, whatever you are applying on this one is always what type of a stress? normal stress. So longitudinal strain will be equal to change in length by original length e is known as what for me or extension. L is your original length. L is known as original length. Clear beta? Sure. Next one is bulk stress. Next one is bulk stress. <laughs> Number one, this is also your normal stress beta. This is also your normal stress. Number two, in this one, volume changes. In the previous one, there is no change in volume, but in this one, volume changes. Number three, shape does not change. Shape does not change. And fourth one, bulk modulus, if I am writing here, our bulk stress will be equal to bulk stress will be equal to bulk stress is equals to change in pressure that is equals to force by area. The same way, if I am talking about your bulk strain bulk strain is equals to change in volume minus minus sign indicates that volume is changing yes but i'll send you the notes bulk strain is equals like say for example if there is a body like this okay and you are applying the force on this one in the normal direction like this i'll also send you the recording no problem so when you're exerting the pressure on all these sides what is happening the body will change its dimension. So this will come to somewhere here right now. So there is change in volume. This is delta V. Clear? Bulk stress is equals to force by area. Bulk strain is minus and indicates that volume is changing. I hope you are clear with this one, everyone. Chalo. Then third type of your stress is shearing stress or also called as of your tangential stress. Also called as of what? Tangential stress. Shearing stress or also called as of your tangential stress. That means, like, see, for example, the word itself it is indicating clearly the force which is acting tangentially is called as of your tangential stress. Isn't it? So I can say that it is a tangential stress. Okay, so in this one, one point you can remember shape changes, shape changes, but volume remains constant. Volume remains constant. There is no change in the volume. Like say, for example, this is some body. Okay. This is kept on an horizontal surface like this. Okay. When you apply the force tangentially on this one, like this. On this one, if I'm applying the force on this direction, tangentially. So what is happening? The body will change its dimension. So this, this point will come to somewhere at this position. 
and this body will go to like this this will be the change in dimensions that so there is a displacement in this one it is making a small angle here theta so this is known as of your displacement this is a displacement of your x this will be the length here that that means if i making an fbd like this initially this was a body don't get confused then after applying the force this point will come here and this point will come here that means this will be fixed here like this so this is your extension this length is same this one is theta then so can i say that shearing stress shearing stress is equals to force by area the same way shearing strain shearing strain is represented by letter phi that is nothing but of your tan phi this tan phi is very very small so i'm taking it as of your phi that is equals to x by your l x by your l that is your shearing strain clear for everyone clear for everyone sir on group you send recording sir yes but i'll send you the recording also okay so shearing stress or tangential stress is nothing but beta it is a tangential stress that means the force which is acting tangentially okay so shearing stress is force by area shearing strain is represented by tan phi and tan phi is equals to represented by phi as angle is very very small <laughs> that is equals to your x by l okay chalo i'll write some points related to this one beta stomach longitudinal and your shearing stress are defined are defined only for solids are defined only for solids fluids doesn't have definite length and shape beta make sure of that one the bracket i'll write fluids doesn't have definite length and shape hence hence we cannot define we cannot define longitudinal and shearing stress for the fluids clear next point bulk stress bulk stress is defined for all for the all sides like say solids for your liquids and gases clear the same way bulk strain bulk strain is to shearing strain shearing strain is to longitudinal strain like alpha beta gamma beta longitudinal strain okay bulk strain means volume shearing strain means area longitudinal strain means length this will be in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 clear beta bulk strain is to shearing strain is to longitudinal strain is equals to your 3 is to 2 is to 1 clear for everyone bulk strain volume constant yes beta in bulk in bulk strain we talk about for volume beta we talk about your volume in shearing strain we talk about your area changes in longitudinal strain we talk about your length changes like alpha is to beta is to gamma is equals to 1 is to 2 is to 3 alpha is for your one dimension beta is for your two dimension gamma is for your three dimension done beta चलो नेक्स्ट वन
Next heading, Hooke's law. Next heading is Hooke's law. See here. Within the elastic limit, within elastic limit, within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. Okay. Now, if I remove this proportionality constant, stress is equals to some constant E into your strain. This E is independent of stress and strain beta. Independent of because it is a constant, it is independent of your stress and strain. Okay, and depends on what beta? E depends on nature of material. As the material changes, E value will be changes. Okay, what is E beta? E is known as E is known as modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity this is your stress stress is equals to your e into your strain where e is known as what modulus of elasticity and e depends is independent of stress and strain and depends on the nature of material like say for iron it is one for copper the value changes for steel the value changes within the elastic limit means better like say Anything has a limit. Like say if I take a rubber band and you extend it to a certain extent, it will get expand. If you go on, it applies more and more and more force. What happens? It will get... What happens? It will break, isn't it? So within the elastic limit, stress will be directly proportional to strain. Something like if I say you, you study it for today, you study for four hours continuously physics. Okay, fine. To some extent, you can manage. If I say that you study daily physics for eight hours, leaving all other bodies, what happens? You get bored or you may be getting fatigue, isn't it? You don't feel comfortable, isn't it? So what is your limit? You can study at a maximum of four hours, minimum of two to one, one to two hours for the physics. This is the limit up to which you can uh, apply anything very comfortably is called as a fill limit beta, okay? Is it clear for everyone? So within the elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to the strain and E is known as modulus of elasticity. Modulus of elasticity is independent of your stress and strain, and it depends upon the nature of your material. Okay, so E depends on what beta? E depends upon your nature of material. So how do you write the Young's modulus? E is equals to E is equals to your stress divided by strain. E is equals to your stress divided by your strain. Okay. So E is the measure of what beta? Elasticity. So E is more means elasticity is also more. I'll write that point here also. E is measure of elasticity. E is the measure of elasticity. That means E is more, elasticity is more. Elasticity is more. That means the body which is having more moduli of elasticity, that body will be more elastic. Okay. So that is the reason we say that steel is more elastic than rubber. Steel is more elastic than rubber. Reason for this one, beta? Can anyone tell me the reason? Steel is more elastic than of your rubber. Reason. I told you E is equals to your stress divided by your strain. Isn't it? So E is directly proportional to your stress. Isn't it? That means to expand it, we require more amount of your energy. Isn't it? So I can say that to produce the same strain, more stress is required for the steel means more elastic. That is the reason we need to remember here. To produce same strain, to produce the same strain, more stress is required. 
more stress is required for steel compared to rubber so more strain stress is more means what elasticity is also more so it means more elastic then how so the steel is more elastic that's what i told you na beta agar if i am having a rubber and if i am having a steel excel right draw the diagram here we we'll get an idea here there is a steel and here there is a rubber okay when i apply the force same amount of your force like this on this one i'm applying certain force so it will get extended like say it will come to something like this it will come to this position okay so this is an extension now produce to produce the same extension to produce the same extension in the steel can you produce it as easily as you are producing the rubber beta no no so to bring it to the same part we require more amount of your force that means we require more amount of your stress to produce the same strain that's what i am writing here see to produce to produce same strain that means change in dimension more stress is required for your steel it means what more elastic because elasticity is directly proportional to the stress more the stress more is elasticity if e is more elasticity is also more is that clear is that clear is that clear sure. next slide dekh types of modulus of elasticity types of modulus of elasticity first one is eng's modulus first one is eng's modulus represented by letter capital y the e thing what we are defined that e is being defined and is been bifurcated into three parts beta in our syllabus one is eng's modulus bulk modulus and rigidity modulus okay e value whatever you are defining e is known as what moduli of elasticity that moduli of elasticity is represented by y that is represented by b r k and it is represented by your nita y is known as eng's modulus b is known as bulk modulus and nita is known as rigidity first modulus of elasticity is right now for me y that is eng's modulus so eng's modulus is nothing but eng's modulus eng's modulus is equals to your longitudinal stress longitudinal stress divided by divided by longitudinal strain longitudinal strain this one is within elastic limit beta within elastic limit within the elastic limit eng's modulus is equal to your longitudinal stress divided by longitudinal strain that means if i take some y right now like this okay and if i am applying some weight for this one now radius r so this is your length l So what is happening to the wire beta? What is happening to the wire? This is say for example area A is equals to pi into your R square. So mass of this one is mass is equals to your volume into density. Volume is four by three pi into your R cube into rho. Okay. So what do you write the Eng's modulus for this one? Eng's modulus y is equals to modulus stress. Stress is nothing but what beta? Force divided by area. longitudinal strain is change in length divided by original length so that is equals to your f divided by your l divided by ea into your e e is your extension delta l is nothing but of your e here beta so can i say that elongation in the y will be equal to how much beta elongation in y elongation in y that is e e is equals to f into your l 
divided by a into your y. So this is your elongation. E is equals to your f into l divided by a into your y. Clear? Length modulus is equals to f into l divided by a into e, and elongation is e is equals to f into l divided by your f into l divided by a into y. So I can write here e is equals to f will be equal to your weight of the body mg into your l divided by area is pi r square into your l. This is your m g into your l divided by pi into r square into your l. Whatever the weight you are applying, mass will be equal to volume into density. Volume into density into your l into g divided by pi r square into your l. Volume will be equal to four by three pi into your r cube into rho into your l into your g divided by pi into your r square into your y. Why capital R? I am taking better because I am taking this one as capital R, and the radius of the y is of your small r, isn't it? That means I can write here extension E is equals to your force F into your V divided by area A square into your length modulus, or else that will be equal to your F into your L square divided by your volume V into your y. So I can write even in this form. These are the different forms of your elongation. Done, brother. E is equal to your f into v divided by your a square into your y. And volume is equal to what, brother? Volume is equal to area into length. So that is the reason a square into l square. A square a square will get cancelled. So it is f into your l square divided by v into your y. Clear, brother? Clear for everyone. Length modulus is y is equals to your longitudinal stress divided by longitudinal strain, or y is equals to your f by a divided by change in length by original length. Okay. Next one. Number two, bulk modulus. Bulk modulus represented by letter K or represented by letter B. Anything represented by your B. So, could you recap the last part, please? C. I have written then elongation E is equals to what is the formula you have see written? Elongation E is equals to your F into your L. See this formula, what I have written is E is equals to F into your L divided by this formula, what you have written here right now. See A into Y. A into Y. What I did is I multiplied by area and divided by area. So it is E is equals to your F into L into your A. Divided by your a into a is nothing but a square into y. That is f into v divided by a square into y. Got it? Got it, brother? Chalo, very good. Next one, bulk modulus. Bulk modulus, dekho kya hota? Already I told you, bulk modulus is equals to. Bulk modulus is equal to your bulk stress divided by bulk strain. Bulk modulus is nothing but bulk stress by bulk stress by bulk strain. That is K is equal to bulk stress is F by your A. Bulk strain is minus of delta V divided by V. That means that is equals to change in pressure divided by minus of delta V divided by V. That is equals to your 
minus of delta p into v divided by delta v okay so from this one i can write delta p is equals to delta p is also equal to your k into minus of change in volume divided by original volume clear k is equals to force by area force by area is nothing but what beta for me pressure force by area is nothing but for me what pressure isn't it our pressure is equals to what i can write k into minus of delta v by v how do you write the pressure beta can anyone tell me pressure is equals to h rho g h into density of liquid into g is equals to your k into your minus of delta v divided by v we know that delta v by v is nothing but what beta v2 minus v1 divided by v1 isn't it tell me what will be the density density of your solid density is equals to mass by volume so can i say that mass is equals to volume into density of your solid that means the density of solid is inversely proportional to the volume that means i can write here minus of delta v by v is equals to delta rho of your s divided by rho of your s can i write like that is an important relation beta h into density of liquid into g is equals to k into minus of delta v by your v clear once again bulk modulus is equals to what beta what do you mean by bulk modulus bulk modulus is equals to your bulk modulus is equals to your bulk stress divided by bulk strain bulk stress means force by area bulk strain means change in volume by original volume why minus because when you apply the force what is happening to the volume volume is decreasing the decrease is represented by your minus the decrease is represented by minus it is minus of delta p into v divided by delta v clear so delta p is equal to k into minus of delta v by v and pressure is equal to how much for me h into rho into g pressure is h into rho into l is nothing but what density of liquid density of liquid change in volume by original volume is equals to change in density of solid divided by density of your solid clear so sure. next type is third one what is the third type of modulus shearing or also called as rigidity or also called as rigidity modulus shearing modulus or also called as rigidity modulus then beta how do you define the shearing modulus shearing modulus is equals to is equals to shearing stress divided by shearing strain shearing modulus is equals to shearing stress divided by shearing strain so neta is equals to represented by neta this is represented by letter neta eta is equals to your tangential force divided by area divided by change in length divided by original length isn't it so that is tangential force into your length isn't it divided by your a into this will be equal to your phi x by l is nothing but what beta phi only na so neta is equals to tangential force divided by area into your phi phi is known as what shearing strain shearing strain i told you in the starting only how do you represent that part okay and in this one you need to remember two three important terms for your competitive examination beta first one is known as compressibility 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 is represented by letter c c is equals to 1 by k or that is nothing but 1 by bulk modulus reciprocal of your bulk modulus is known as compressibility so i can say that bulk modulus of your solid is greater than the bulk modulus of your liquid 
which is greater than the bulk modulus of your gas. That means compressibility of compressibility of your solid is lesser than compressibility of liquid, which is lesser than compressibility of your gas. Okay. I hope you remember this diagram just now I had drawn you. This is a cube. Okay. When you apply the force on this one, when you apply the force on this one, like say in this direction, you can resolve the forces into components like this. One force is along the tangential, one force is along the normal to this one. So we take always tangential force. Tangential force divided by area, divided by your shearing strain is known as of your rigidity modulus. Is that clear, Veda? Is it clear? Next stop. Poison's ratio. Poison's ratio. Represented will later sigma. See here, Veda. What do you mean by Poison's ratio is? I'll explain you the diagram. Like say for example, if there is a wire like this. Okay. The length of this one is say for example L. Okay. When you apply the force on this one, when you apply the force on this one, what is happening? Length of this one will change. Okay, so here you are applying a force, so length is increasing. So this is your increase in length. This is your delta L. Okay, and this is your actual radius, but from here to here, there is your actual radius. Now this one is your change in radius. Radius has been changed. That means that is nothing but how much one? Minus. Radius is decreasing, so that is your minus. That means what I mean to say is, when a wire is subjected to when a wire is subjected to your deforming force within elastic limit within elastic limit i can say that lateral contraction lateral contraction in your strain is directly proportional to longitudinal strain directly proportional to your longitudinal elongation in strain longitudinal elongation strain not in strain lateral means how do you write beta can anyone tell me See, there is change in length, beta. Length is changed there. That is elongation. And there is change in the diameter. Or there is a change in radius, I can say. That is known as lateral contraction. Strain means what? Minus of delta R divided by R is proportional to your delta L divided by your L. So if I remove this proportionality, minus of delta R divided by R is equals to sigma into delta L divided by your L. This sigma is known as Poisson's ratio. So this sigma is known as what, Vito? Poison's ratio. Poison's ratio. So now I hope we can define the Poison's ratio, Vito. So if I remove the sigma out, so sigma is equals to minus of delta R divided by R divided by delta L divided by L. Isn't it? That means sigma is equals to your lateral contraction in your strain divided by divided by longitudinal elongation elongation strain then better 
that is our practical formula sigma is equals to your lateral contraction in the strain divided by longitudinal elongation in your strain is known as of your poisson's ratio is known as of your poisson's ratio and the theoretical values of this one are theoretical values of sigma are uh, minus 1 by 2 to your 1 by 2 okay and experimental value if i am taking experimental values uh, it is somewhere between 0 to 0.5 0 to point clear beta so what is the relation between the beta poisson's ratio is nothing but what when a wire is being subjected to some deforming force within the elastic limit lateral contraction is directly proportional lateral contraction in your strain is directly proportional to your lateral elongation in the strain lateral contraction means change in diameter or change in radius is directly proportional to change in length by original length. So, remembering the proportionality constant, we are getting some constant known as sigma. Sigma is known as of your Poisson's ratio. Practical value is minus half to half and experimental value is 0 to your 0.5. So, sigma is equal to lateral contraction divided by longitudinal elongation is known as of your sigma. Clear, beta? Is it clear for everyone? Then <laughs> better. Sure. Do you have the time? Exciting better. Relation between Engs modulus, rigidity modulus, bulk modulus, and the sigma. Derivations are not there in our syllabus. So, direct relations, you need to remember them by practicing n number of your times beta. The first relation is 9 divided by your Engs modulus y is equal to 1 by your k plus 3 times of your rigidity modulus. Or else I can write from this one y is equal to 9 nita into your k divided by 3k plus of your nita. Okay, the next one. Y is equal to 2 times of nita into 1 plus sigma. This is the relation between Y rigidity modulus and Poisson's ratio. And third one is Y is equal to 3K into your 1 minus 2 times of sigma. And fourth one is sigma is equal to your 3K minus of 2 into rigidity modulus divided by 6k plus 2 times of rigidity modulus. What do you mean by y beta? y is known as of your Engs modulus and k is known as of your bulk modulus. Nita is known as of your shearing modulus or rigidity modulus. And last one is sigma. Sigma is known as of your Poisson's ratio. These are all the relations you need to remember better. Is that clear for everyone? Is that clear better? Any doubt in this one to anyone? Clear better? Exciting applications. Of 
of elasticity. Applications of your elasticity. First one better. Say for a given material, whatever material you are taking, force will be directly proportional to your change in length because Young's modulus, area, and length L are same. They are not going to change. That means F by your delta L is equal to your constant. So I can say here F1 divided by your elongation in the first y must be equal to your F2 divided by your L2 elongation in the second y. Clear? Very important application beta. If the Young's modulus, area, and length are same, F by your elongation will always be your constant. Okay, let me give an example for this one. So many times it has been occurred in your competitive examinations also. Like say, for a given length of L1, for a load F1, for a given length of L1 for a load of your F1 and L2 for a load F2. Find its initial length. That is nothing but L0. So this is an example. What we have got is for a given length of L1, isn't it? For a given length of your L1, uh, there is a load of your how much F1 and for a length L2 there is a load of F2 then what might have been its initial length L0 that means what there is an initial length of the wire beta like this this is L0 when I'm applying certain force this has become how much for me L1 by what force by force of F1 again when I have been increased the force to your F2 the extension is L2. What is this initial length is asking? What is its initial length is asking? What do you mean by that one better? This is L1. The extension will be equal to how much better? This is your elongation. This elongation will be equal to how much better? L1 minus of L0. This elongation will be equal to how much better? This elongation will be equal to how much? From this point if I am writing from here to here. This will be equal to L2 minus of your L0. Got it? Okay. That means F1 divided by elongation is L1 minus L0 is equals to F2 divided by L2 minus of your L0. Cross multiply this one. This is F1 into L2 minus L0 is equals to your F2 into L1 minus L0. So this one is F1 into L2 minus F1 into your L0 is equals to F2 into L1 minus F2 into your L0. So all the L0 terms you take on one side, beta. So all the L0 terms if I take on one side and all F1 terms and F2 terms on the other side. So I can get the value of your L0, isn't it? So like say for example, this is your F1 into your L2 plus this one is f2 into your l0 is equals to f2 into your l1 minus is plus f1 into your l0 done better if i still further simplify this one i can write the value of l0 all l0 terms you can take on one side better In F1 and F2, which one will be more better? F2 will be more, now. So I can write here, F1 into your L2 minus F2 into your L0 is equals to your F1 into your L0, F1 into your L0 minus, this will be your F2 into your L0.
F2 into this one is L1, no? Why L0? Let me just check with the calculation ones. Yeah. So I need the value of your L0, no? So I can take this here, L0 is equals to this will be equal to your F2 into your L1 minus F1 into your L2 divided by this will be your F1 plus of your F2. That's it. Very simple. L0 is equal to your F2 into your L1 minus of your F1 into your L2 divided by F1 plus F2. What an idea? Once again, for a given wire of length L1, we are having a load of how much for me? F1. Isn't it? I'll draw the diagram once again. It will be more better. This is initial length L0. When you apply the force F1, the extension in this one will be L1 minus L0. Next extension is this one from here to here. So from initial, it is L2 minus L0. That is an extension. Just now I told you the formula. For a given material, L1, F1 divided by delta L will always be your constant. So that is the reason I have written F1 by L1 minus L0 is equal to F2 divided by L2 minus L0. Cross multiply and simplify it will get L0 is equal to F2 into L1 minus F1 into your L2 divided by F1 plus F2. Is that clear for everyone? Any doubt in this one? Dheeraj. Let me give an example for you, the form of numerica. Like say, for a given y, length becomes length becomes L1 when you are applying force of 4 newton. L2 when you are applying the force of 5 newton. And L3 is equals to how much when you are applying the force of 9 Newton? That is our question. Okay. For a given wire, L1 is, that means initial length is for me right now, some length. Now, when you're applying a force of 4 Newton, it is becoming L1. When I'm applying a force of 5 Newton, it is becoming L2. When I'm applying a force of L3, now when I'm applying a force of 9 Newton, it is becoming L3. What is that value of L3 is asking? Done, beta? Is it done? So first one, force extinction formula I'm writing. First force is force F divided by L1 minus of L0 is equals to 5 divided by L2 minus of L0 is equals to 9 divided by L3 minus L0. Isn't it? So if I take this relation, 4 into your, uh, this will become for me your L2 minus 4 into your L0 is equals to 5 into your L1 minus 5 into your L0. I'm taking first two equations. Okay. So from this one, if I'm simplifying, this will become how much better? 4L2, this one is 5. 4L2, 5. So this will become how much for me? 5L0 minus 4L0. So this will become for me L0. That is equals to 5L1 minus 4 into L2. This is the value of your L0. Okay. I'm taking first this two. The next one is, if I'm taking this one, this two now, that is five times of your L3 minus five times of your L0 is equals to nine times of L2 minus nine times of L0. All L0 terms on one side. That means this will become for me five L3 is equals to nine into L2 minus 9L0 minus 5L0. That will become for me 4L0. That means 5L3 is equal to 9 into L2 minus 4 into. L0 value already we got. 5 times of L1 minus 4 times of L2. This value. So if I simplify this one. This is 5 times of L3 is equal to 9 times of L2 minus. So this will be equal to how much for me? 5 4 is 20. So it is 20 times of L1 minus 4 for the 16, 16 times of your L2. All L1 terms and all L2 terms you take on one side and simplify it better. 
will be getting the value of your L3. L3 you should be getting as 5 times of your L2 minus 4 times of your L1. You can check your calculation there. Okay. So this is the way how do we do the problems related to that one. Clear for everyone? Sure. So remaining part of the mechanical properties of the solids applications, we'll try to do it in the tomorrow. Like application, what happens when it is immersed in the water, bion force is happening, what happened to its length, stress and strain curve graph related to that one, isn't it? And comparison with your springs connections, isn't it? And expansion on its own length or remaining conditions, all we'll try to do it in the tomorrow session of your class. Okay. Sure. Okay, better. Take care, Veda. Bye.